Alarm screamed in Aaron King's cryopod as the human jolted awake, gasping for air, shocked and disoriented to find himself alone on a strange ship, his last memory being Earth's launch bay. According to the pod's display, 869,915 years had passed. What the hell happened? Aaron croaked, struggling to make sense of it. The ship's AI crackled to life, its voice tinny through damaged speakers. It explained that the sleeper ship had drifted for eons before an unknown event triggered the reactivation sequence. Scans showed no signs of human civilization anywhere. As far as the AI could tell, Aaron was quite possibly the last living human in the universe. Humanity. Extinct. The words hit Aaron like a gut punch. It couldn't be true. In a panic, he overrode the AI's protests and broadcasted a system-wide distress beacon, praying that someone, anyone, would respond. He got his wish, but not in any way he expected. A colossal alien ship, all sleek lines and thrumming with power, appeared alongside his battered craft. Before Aaron could react, a tractor beam locked on, reeling him into a cavernous docking bay. Armored beings, bipedal but unmistakably non-human, stormed his ship. They seemed as shocked to see him as he was to see them. Impossible, one said. A living human. Aaron soon found himself on the alien vessel, face to face with their commander, Lyran. She represented the Galactic Federation, an alliance of spacefaring species that spanned the Milky Way. Aaron cut right to it. What happened to humanity? Lyran hesitated. Humans vanished long ago. We thought you went extinct. Extinct? How? Again, Lyran seemed to choose her words carefully. Records from that time are incomplete. There was an upheaval, a conflict, perhaps. After that, humans were simply gone. She wasn't telling him everything. Aaron was sure of it. He sensed a darker truth lurking beneath the surface. An explanation so repugnant, the alien dared not voice it. Aaron had woken into a galaxy where humans were myths, where Earth was ancient history, and where a powerful federation now called the Shots. He was a living anachronism, an echo of a species that dared to challenge the federation's grip on the cosmos. But there was hope, however slim. If the federation feared humanity enough to erase them from existence, then perhaps, just maybe, some defiant humans endured out there in the vast abyss. Survivors, scattered to the stellar winds, keeping mankind's flame burning in secret enclaves. As an unlikely bond slowly formed between Aaron and Liran, the human realized the perilous path before him. He had to navigate an alien federation, learn the new rules of this era, find any remnants of his species, and perhaps, in the process, reignite a revolution 800 millennia in the making. The Federation wanted him silenced. What they didn't realize was that Aaron would gladly be the spark that burned their empire down if it meant restoring humanity to its rightful place. The future of mankind hung on one resurrected human. Aaron just prayed he was up to the task as alarms blared and enemy ships closed in, weapons hungry for blood. Laser fire raked across their stolen ship's hull as Aaron frantically worked the controls, trying to evade the Federation patrol that had spotted them leaving the system. Lyran, strapped into the co-pilot's chair, fingers flying over her console, shouted, Shields at 30%! We can't take much more of this! I'm working on it! Aaron gritted his teeth, wrenching the ship into a stomach-churning spiral. The inertial dampeners whined in protest. A red light on the dash began blinking urgently. Their FTL drive was finally charged. Hang on! He slammed the activation button. The stars stretched into glowing lines as they accelerated into the swirling vortex of a wormhole. The Federation ships fell away, unable to follow. Panting, hands shaking from the adrenaline, Aaron punched in the coordinates for a remote star system praying the cryptic lead they dug up about a lost human colony would pan out. It was a desperate gamble, but what choice did they have? They jumped, the ship shuddering as it tunneled through warped space-time. Long minutes passed in tense silence before they finally reverted to real space. A dim red dwarf sun greeted them, 
its meager light barely illuminating the handful of planets orbiting it. There, Lyran said, pointing to the scanner display. Third planet. I'm picking up an artificial structure in orbit. As they approached, the structure grit into a sprawling space station, its hull pitted and scarred from untold centuries of wear. It floated lifelessly around a barren, rocky world, a relic from a bygone age. They docked with the station, the ship's airlock cycling open to let them step into the abandoned corridors beyond. The air was thin and stale, recyclers long since offline. A thick layer of dust coated every surface. Flashlight beams cutting through the gloom, Aaron and Lyran explored the empty halls, their footsteps echoing eerily. Signs of past human habitation were everywhere, faded insignias on the bulkheads, broken equipment bearing human serial numbers, but no bodies. Whoever had lived here had packed up and left long ago. In what had once been a command center, Aaron huddled over a flickering, barely functional terminal, trying to coax it back to life. I'm in, he said finally, fingers tapping commands. Let's see what we can find. Text scrolled across the screen, fragmented log entries from centuries past, supply manifests, crew rosters, and there, a reference to a place called Sanctuary, a hidden human bastion established in the chaotic years after the purge, the last desperate refuge of a species on the brink of extinction. Heart pounding, Aaron downloaded the precious data, but as the file transfer completed, an alarm sounded. Lyran whirled, her expression grim. It's a trap! The station just activated a Federation tracking device! No sooner had she spoken than a new klaxon blared. Proximity alert. A Federation strike force had appeared on their sensors, led by a heavy cruiser. An incoming transmission crackled over the comm. This is Elite Commander Zorgax of the Federation. We know you're in there, human. You and your traitorous companion. Surrender now and your deaths will be quick. Resist, and you will beg for that mercy before the end. Zorgax, Lyran whispered. My old superior, a stone-cold killer. Aaron's hands clenched into fists. He'll have to catch us first. He sprinted for the control room, Lyran on his heels. Outside, the Federation ships grew larger on the display, weapons dripping. They were out of time. Aaron's fingers flew over the interface. The station's reactor is old but functional. I'm setting it to overload. Massive radiation surge in five minutes. If we time it right, we can ride the blast wave out of here while they're scrambling. An EMP burst, Lyran said, understanding. It'll fry their systems. And cover our escape. Let's move. Hard in his throat, Aaron gunned their stolen ship's engines, rocketing away from the station as the reactor began to redline. The Federation vessels, sensing the danger, scattered, desperate to reach minimum safe distance. The reactor blew. A searing flash of light engulfed the station, a miniature supernova blooming in the void. Their tiny craft bucked and jolted as the blast wave slammed into them, alarms shrieking. Aaron clung to the controls, fighting to keep them on course as the surge propelled them clear. In the rear view, the Federation strike force reeled, their electronics sparking and shorting out. Seizing their chance, Aaron and Lyran jumped to FTL speeds, leaving Zorgax and his hunters far behind. But they knew it was only a temporary reprieve. The Federation would be coming, and now, more than ever, they needed to find sanctuary before it was too late. The ship lurched as it exited the jump, Systems flickering from the strain. Aaron gripped the controls, fighting to steady their course as a bizarre star system materialized before them. A massive blue supergiant dominated the view, its intense radiation bathing everything in an eerie glow. Lyran, what are you seeing? Aaron called out, eyes darting between readouts. She hunched over the sensor array, brow furrowed. Multiple terrestrial planets clustered unusually close to the star, but the radiation levels... It shouldn't be habitable. Yet, as they pushed deeper into the system, dodging swirling clouds of radioactive gas, their instruments picked up an anomaly. Faint energy signatures, artificial in origin, emanating from one of the inner worlds. There! Aaron exclaimed, hope surging. That has to be Zion. 
but reaching it proved a gauntlet of deadly hazards. First came a dense asteroid field, rocks the size of mountains hurtling past at terrifying speeds. Aaron's hands flew across the controls, juking and weaving. Cannons charged, Lyran shouted. Fire! Energy lanced out, blasting apart asteroids to clear their path. Debris pinged off the hull as they plowed through the gap. They'd barely caught their breath when alarms blared. Massive solar flare incoming, Lyran yelled. The blue supergiant belched a wall of plasma, racing towards them faster than they could hope to outrun. Aaron frantically scanned for shelter, spotting a comet tumbling nearby. Hang on, he roared, cranking the engines to full. They skimmed the comet's surface, tucking into its shadow mere seconds before the flare hit. The ship shuddered violently as radiation levels spiked. For agonizing minutes, they clung to their seats, praying the comet's bulk would shield them. When it finally passed, Aaron let out a shaky breath. Damage report? Lyran's fingers danced across her console. Shields are fried, but we're still flying. Barely. They limped onward, only to face a new obstacle. A vast debris field jam packed with dormant drones. Relics of some ancient battle, their automated defenses still active after centuries. We'll never make it through that gauntlet, Lyran said grimly. Aaron's eyes narrowed, an idea forming. Maybe we don't have to. Those drones, can we trigger them remotely? Understanding dawned on Lyran's face. She nodded, fingers flying as she sent out carefully calibrated signals. One by one, drones activated, weapons firing. A chain reaction spread through the field, the drones destroying each other and clearing a path. They threaded the needle of devastation, emerging into clear space with Zion looming ahead. Its verdant surface was a welcome sight after the hellish journey, but as they settled into orbit, they saw no cities, no spaceports, just wilderness. There, Lyran pointed. Energy readings, some kind of cloaking field. Aaron hailed the hidden colony, heart pounding. A gruff voice answered, demanding identification. Before he could respond, their ship was locked in a tractor beam, dragged down to a concealed landing pad. Armed figures swarmed them as they exited. Hands where we can see them, one barked. Who are you and how did you find this place? Aaron raised his arms slowly. My name is Aaron King. I'm human from Earth. We've come seeking help. Disbelief and suspicion warred on their faces. They were marched to a stark white room where Aaron underwent a barrage of tests and interrogations. Gene scans, historical quizzes, psychological evaluations. Hours passed before a stern-faced woman entered. I am Anna Tereshkova, she said coolly. You claim to be from Earth. Explain. Aaron told his story, the cryopod, his awakening, the extinct humanity he'd found. Anna's eyes widened at mention of the Federation. So they've found us at last, she murmured. She revealed the truth of Zion, descendants of refugees who'd fled when the Federation purged humanity centuries ago. They'd hidden here ever since, forsaking advanced technology to avoid detection. But now the Federation hunts us again, Aaron said. We need to fight back, and we need your help to do it. Anna's lips pursed. You ask us to abandon generations of safety for a war we can't win? We have to try, Aaron insisted, or humanity dies forever. The council convened, fiercely debating the issue. In the end, it came down to Anna's vote. She stared at Aaron for a long moment before nodding grimly. We'll help you, she said. God help us all. But they'd barely begun planning when alarms shrieked. Federation ships decloaked in orbit, raining fire upon Zion's shields. How did they find us? Anna cried. Aaron's blood ran cold. Zorgax, he must have followed us somehow. The shields buckled under the assault. Panic erupted as the colonists scrambled to evacuate. Aaron and Anna raced to coordinate the exodus while Lyran rallied what meager defenses Zion possessed. Buildings crumbled. Fires raged. Aaron hauled shell-shocked civilians onto shuttles bound for hidden redoubts off-world. Each blast felt like a physical blow. Years of history and hope reduced to ash. 
Finally, as the last shuttle prepared to launch, Aaron spotted Lyran sprinting towards them, pulse rifle in hand. They piled in, the hatch sealing just as another bombardment struck. The shuttle lurched skyward, buffeted by shockwaves. Through the viewport, Aaron watched Zion recede, wreathed in flames. His fists clenched as a cold fury settled in his chest. They'd lost this battle, but the war was not nearly finished. In the crowded shuttle bay of their ragtag fleet, Aaron, Anna, and Lyran huddled over a battered data pad. Intel from Zion's archives scrolled past. Fleet movements, supply lines, command structures. The seeds of a plan took root. We hit them where it hurts, Aaron said, voice hard. Cripple their ability to chase us. Buy time to rebuild. Anna nodded grimly. Where do we start? Aaron's finger jabbed at a star map. Here, their primary communications hub. We take it out. We blind them. Perseverance glinted in Lyran's eyes. When do we move? Now, Aaron said. We've got nothing left to lose. The ships of the newborn human resistance jumped to light speed, leaving the ashes of Zion behind. Their destination, the first battle in a war to reclaim humanity's future. Aaron hunched over the holographic display, a sea of data scrolling before his eyes. The archives from Zion held secrets, dangerous ones. His fingers danced across the interface, decrypting files that hadn't been accessed in centuries. There, he muttered, zooming in on a string of coordinates. Lyran, take a look at this. She leaned in, eyes widening. A Federation armory? Here? Decommissioned but intact. It's our best shot at evening the odds. They assembled a strike team, cramming into a retrofitted stealth shuttle. As they approached the asteroid base... Tension crackled through the air. We've got one shot at this, Aaron said. Hit fast, hit hard. The shuttle's engines cut out, drifting silently towards the base. At the last second, they fired up, slamming through the weakest point in the asteroid's hull. Alarms blared as they poured out, weapons at the ready. Ancient defense turrets whirred to life, spitting plasma. Aaron dove behind a crate, the heat searing his back. Push forward, he shouted. They fought their way deeper, room by room. In the command center, Lyran's fingers flew across the consoles. I've got control of internal defenses, she called. We're clear to the main vault. The doors groaned open, revealing racks of weaponry and stacks of munitions. But Aaron's eyes locked onto a small black cube, pulsing with blue light. What is that? Anna asked. Aaron carefully lifted the device. This... This changes everything. Back on their flagship, Aaron interfaced the cube with their systems. Lines of code flashed across screens as the AI awakened. Time to cause some chaos, Aaron grinned. They struck like ghosts in the night. Federation shipyards ground to a halt as virus-laden programs corrupted their systems. Supply chains fractured as personnel databases became scrambled beyond recognition. Seizing the moment... Aaron launched lightning raids on isolated outposts. The Resistance's ranks swelled with liberated prisoners and disgruntled aliens, their stolen fleet growing with each victory. But it wasn't enough. Aaron knew they needed a true turning point. Axilix, he announced to his war council. We take the capital. Lyran frowned. The planetary shields... Leave those to me, she interrupted. I still have contacts there. Give me a small team and I can get us an opening. The assault was carefully orchestrated chaos. As Lyran's infiltrators disabled the shields, the resistance fleet dropped out of hyperspace. Aaron's voice rang out across all channels. People of Axilix, the chains of tyranny end today. Their ships rained fire on government strongholds. On the ground, resistance cells emerged from hiding, arming the populace. Streets erupted in firefights as slaves turned on their masters. Federation reinforcements poured in, but it was too late. Aaron watched from the bridge as Axilix burned, knowing the cost of freedom. In the aftermath, as the dust settled on their new foothold, Aaron dispatched emissaries. To subjugated worlds across the sector, they carried a message. Rise up. Join us. The Federation reeled, 
its iron grip loosening. But Aaron knew the true test was yet to come. Grand Admiral Vexilor's face filled view screens across Axilix, his voice cold. You have made your choice, he intoned. Now face the consequences. The first bioweapons struck without warning. Entire cities choked and withered. Radiation bombs turned verdant plains to wastelands. Aaron could only watch in horror as Axilix died. They evacuated everyone they could, but billions perished. The survivors' eyes burned with a hatred that would fuel the resistance for years to come. In the command center of their hidden base, Aaron addressed his generals. Humans stood shoulder to shoulder with a dozen alien species, united in purpose. We've bloodied their nose, he said. Now it's time to break their jaw. Our next target will cripple their ability to wage this war. We strike at the heart of their resource production. He pulled up a star chart, zooming in on a heavily fortified system. To win this fight, we're going to need to take Helios Prime. Aaron stood on the bridge of his battered cruiser, surveying the wreckage-strewn void where Clendathu's mighty defenses once stood. Twisted metal and charred hull fragments drifted past viewports, still crackling with residual energy from the stellar cataclysm. Status report, he rasped, voice hoarse from hours of shouting orders. A junior officer tapped furiously at a flickering console. Shields at 12%, weapons offline, life support stable, but fuel reserves critically low. Aaron nodded grimly. Any word from the rest of the fleet? Incoming transmission, sir. It's Commander Lyran. Lyran's face materialized on the main view screen, her features etched with exhaustion and streaked with blood. Aaron, good to see you made it out. Likewise, what's our situation? Lyran's eyes hardened. It's bad. We've lost over 80% of our ships. The survivors are scattered across half the sector. Comms barely functional. Aaron's fists clenched. And the Federation? In chaos. The Dyson Network's collapse has knocked out power to their core worlds. Reports coming in of widespread riots, military units going rogue. A savage grin spread across Aaron's face. Then it worked. We've broken their back. Lyran nodded, but her expression remained grim. At what cost, Aaron? We've unleashed something we can't control. The power vacuum. Every warlord and petty despot will be scrambling to carve out their own empire. Aaron's gaze drifted to the swirling stellar debris outside. The remnants of Eom Tana burned with primal fury, a newborn star birthed from the ashes of tyranny. We knew the risks, he said softly. The old order had to fall. And what comes next? Lyran demanded. We've shattered the galactic balance. Billions will suffer in the chaos to come. Aaron's fists tight. Then we build something better, a new future forged in the fires of our rebellion. Lyran's eyes bored into him. How? We're barely holding together as it is. We adapt. We grow stronger. Aaron's voice rang with conviction. Humanity survived extinction once. We'll do it again, and this time we'll take our rightful place among the stars. A warning klaxon blared. The junior officer's voice cut through the tension. Sir, we've got multiple contacts incoming. Looks like scavengers, drawn by the battle. Aaron straightened, steel entering his voice. Sound general quarters. Lyran, rendezvous at these coordinates. It's time to show the galaxy that humanity is back. As the crew sprang into action around him, Aaron allowed himself a moment of quiet reflection. The enormity of what they'd done. The countless lives lost. Civilizations toppled. The very fabric of galactic society torn asunder threatened to overwhelm him. But in the swirling cosmic maelstrom outside, he saw not just destruction, but rebirth. A chance to forge a new destiny from the crucible of conflict. The moment passed. Aaron King, last scion of a fallen Earth, squared his shoulders and strode towards the command chair. The next chapter in humanity's story was about to unfold, written in starfire and sacrifice across the eternal night. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. 
Thank you for your time.